Um, I think as we move into the new time with further restrictions, and we're all starting to realise this is not going to be over by Christmas. Um, we're into something quite different. We're into a different world. So it's a time to pray. It's a time to be thinking about how we move forward. And in a way, we've got a bit more certainty now. We know it's not going to get any better for a while. And that's some sort of certainty. Keep praying, preparing, thinking about you know, what we can and can't do. Pray. And we will be doing things in this new world that we're in. And keep praying. So, Nick will be speaking to us about, um, about uh, on our theme later. Um, and I understand, he was at St. Mary's earlier, and I've heard that um, it was pretty powerful. So, um, be ready. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> so, part of our story we saw with Nehemiah was that time of, of lament and that time of seeking forgiveness, that time of confession. So we remind ourselves of, of the law that we are required and that we have given our lives to keep. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments, Hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And we long for the fire of God's cleansing to touch our unclean lips for our guilt to be removed and for our sin to be wiped out. So we meet Father, Son and Holy Spirit with repentance in our hearts. Let me just take a moment to think of the enormity of that the hugeness of God's love for us, that we can come to him and we can come and say that we're sorry. And we pray together. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners we turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do for the sake of Jesus who died for us. Forgive us for all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. And the good news is not only that we can come to God, but that we can receive from God. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And bearing in mind the theme of worship for today, we don't often have the Gloria here at St Andrews, but I thought today we would say the Gloria as an act of, of worship.
answer together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the prayer for today. Faithful Lord, whose steadfast love never ceases and whose mercies never come to an end, grant us the grace to trust you and to receive the gifts of your love new every morning. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. That's a good ask, isn't it? Grant us the grace to trust you. And it's only in that trust can we receive the gifts of love. Now Barbara is going to come and bring us our readings. The first reading is from Nehemiah, parts of chapter 8. When the seventh month came, and the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled as one man in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So, on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, This day is sacred to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for this is a sacred day. Do not grieve. Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food, and to celebrate with great joy, 
because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. This is the word of the Lord. And our Gospel reading is from Matthew 22, verses 15 to 22. And it's headed, Paying Taxes to Caesar. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you no, pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose portrait is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, so they left him and went away. <laughs> oh, I, I, I struggle to remember it as well, I must admit. Uh, Nick will now come and speak to us. Well, good morning, everybody. It's lovely to, uh, to come and uh, talk to everyone. Now, hopefully, you've all got on your um, chair one of these. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But if you were here last week, you may well recognize the words. So we've just been hearing about how Ezra talked from dawn until lunchtime. You'll be glad to know that I'm not planning on going for quite that long. But it's not that that I think is really important in this story. It's the reaction of the people. Now, I think there's something really special when God moves people en masse. I've seen it at things like Spring Harvest, where you've got seven or 8,000 people in a tent. And a preacher or a song just captures the hearts of everyone there. And you get thousands of people just worshipping God together. And it's really special. But it doesn't have to be in massive groups like that. It can be in much smaller groups, where God is just there and everyone can feel it. And I felt that here on a number of occasions, even with a smaller, a smaller group. God is just there. You know he's there with you. And uh, last week we had a song. I'm going to turn that slightly. Um, we had a song and I'm going to play you a different version of it today because it's a song that has moved God's people, not just in the church that it was written in, but across the world. And the words for the first verse, at least, are the words on the piece of paper that I've given you. But in our reading today, we read of something really special, a true revival thousands of years ago that didn't just capture the hearts of the people there, but captured the hearts of the whole nation. And as it should be, the word of God was right at the center of that revival. Ezra reads the scriptures from first thing in the morning until lunchtime. Not just a quick recap, but an in-depth look at what God's word was saying to those people. And they listened, and they responded, bowing down and worshipping God. Well, straight away, this is a challenge. When was the last time you or I 
read the scripture from daybreak till lunchtime. Well, I'm not sure I've ever done that. I'm not sure I've ever read the scriptures from daybreak till breakfast, let alone lunchtime. And I found that a, a challenge when I was preparing this, and I'll come on to that a, again a little bit later. Last week, in the passage from Nehemiah 5, Nick um, taught, told us about the discord and the disharmony. I think those were the words you actually put up on the screen earlier on, that there was in the Jewish nation at the time about paying taxes and in the fact that it appeared that some of the Jewish nation were exploiting other parts. It wasn't a happy situation. But since then, a lot has been happening. The wall around Jerusalem has been rebuilt. That didn't actually go down very well with the surrounding nations because initially they thought that the Jews were building their defences so that they could revolt. But those nations eventually realised that God was behind rebuilding of the wall. And for the Jewish people, it was the first time in a long time that they actually had adequate physical protection. And this could have led to them being completely complacent. But actually it didn't. And this story today was part of that. It was um, a time of spiritual revival and rebuilding in the nation. Now Ezra reappeared at that point. And what we don't get from the reading was that actually he'd been off the scene for 13 years. This is the first time in 13 years that he's mentioned of doing anything. And he doesn't do it by half, does he? He comes in and gets a revival going. Now, the word of God is a bit like an owner's manual. Now, most of us, with possibly one or two accepted, will remember the days. Do you remember those Haynes owner's manuals for cars and things? Um, takes you back, doesn't it? I don't think, they, don't think those sort of exist anymore. Do they? All oh, right, excellent. Um, but what, what they do is they tell you how to run something. And the Bible is a bit like that. The Bible tells us how to live our lives and how to accomplish the purpose that, for what we were created, for glorifying and serving God. And the people back in Ezra's time didn't just listen passively, but they absolutely lapped it up. They lifted their hands and were told in the story that they responded, Amen, Amen. And even Nehemiah, the, the governor, recognized what was happening and said, This day is holy to the Lord your God. It was a special day, a time for celebration. The people were encouraged not to mourn or to weep while they were listening. They were encouraged to look forward and to praise God for what they were hearing, not look back and dwell on how they had let God down in the past, but to move forward and to praise. But the key thing here is how seriously they took the word of God. And this is the real challenge, I think, for us. Firstly, they respected God's word. The whole revival was built and based around that word. They listened for hours and hours. They stood to listen because they recognized how important it was. Well, do we always regard the Bible in that way? I know that sometimes um, we stand when the gospel is read. Certainly uh, at school, when that happens, we stand every time the gospel is read. And I remember that when I was growing up. I don't think we do it so much these days. But do we really understand why? Well, those people respected God's word so much that they just couldn't sit and listen passively. They had to stand up and they had to praise God. Secondly, they realized the importance of what was happening. Their minds weren't wandering. They weren't distracted. They weren't checking their watches or having a quick glance at their phones or letting their minds wander to what they were cooking at lunchtime. They knew that the words that were being read to them were words of hope, words that could give them direction and purpose. And as I said earlier on, to be honest, as I wrote this talk, I realized that perhaps I don't revere the word of God as much as I should. I try and live my life by it. I try to think, what would Jesus do when I'm making decisions in my life? But I don't read it as much as I should, and I'm going to have to work on that. Thirdly, they revered it. 
We've already heard that they stood to stand, to, stood to read it, but that wasn't enough. They were responding vocally and physically. They raised their hands, they called out, Amen, Amen, and then they fell on their knees and prayed. They knew that God was speaking to each of them directly. But they weren't revering the scrolls that Ezra was reading. It wasn't about how old or how beautifully they were, they were written. It was about the words that they contained. It was recognizing that God's word was written for them. Well, the Bible is a very special book. I would go as far as to say the most special book ever written. There are hundreds or even thousands of translations in various languages around the world, specifically because of what those books say to us today. Next week, we will have a, a, a video from the Gavids. I don't think they're going to be here themselves, are they? But I think, I think, they, I think they're going to be doing a, a video which will show. And they've given a large part of their lives to spreading that word and, and having that word written in, in languages that, that, don't have that, that don't have a translation at the moment. And those words speak to us just as they spoke to the Jewish nation as Ezra, Ezra read them. And we have better access to God's word than any generation before us. We have it in books. We have it on computers and on our phones. We can listen to it in podcasts. I was thinking earlier on, when was the last time I physically picked up a Bible? Because normally, I'm reading it on my phone or on my computer. And that access means that I can just get it whenever I want it. And if for any reason I can't read it, I can just press a button and it will read it to me. So we have greater access than any generation to God's word. But do we really use it as we should? We should let the Holy Spirit impress it on our minds. We should open up our ears, open up our hearts, and let the life-changing message of this book change our lives. We have to believe that God can and will speak to, it, speak to us through it. And when that happens, our response will be the same as the response of these people. We will worship God. Our hands will go up. Our voices will cry out. Our knees will go down. But hang on, isn't this exactly why we read about the people crying and mourning? They were realizing the same thing. They were realizing that they weren't giving God and giving God's word that reverence. But Ezra told them not to weep and to mourn, but to celebrate. Let's not look back, but look forward to what God can mean to us and what he can do in our lives and the lives of the people around us. Well, the gospel passage from Matthew is very much related to this. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. We are part of an earthly realm, but we are also part of a heavenly realm. And we, ought, we need to ensure that we give both their due. Yes, we should follow the law, particularly at this time of pandemic, where following the law can mean the difference between life and death to others. But we also need to give to God what is God's, and that includes our respect and our reverence for his word. Well, back at the start of the pandemic, I heard a song for the first time, and we had that song just last week on the screen. It was a song called The Blessing by Kobe, uh, Carrie Jobe and Cody Carnes, who were the, 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 the woman and the man that sang the lead on the song last week. And when I heard it, I assumed it had been around for ages. And it's, it is basically scripture. It's scripture sung. And back then, it made me tear up. And it still makes me emotional every time I hear it. Because it made me realize that God's blessing on us is not just for one day, but forever, for a thousand generations. Well, as I say, the, the first verse is on this um, sheet that I've given to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. 
Now, those are words that I'm sure we've all heard loads and loads of times over the years. But when I heard it in that song, it meant something really special. I think in these days at the moment, we need to hear this more than ever. Our God is not a God who sits in heaven waiting to be worshipped. No, he is a God who does more for us than we can ever understand or hope to repay. He is a proactive God who is willing to send his only son to die for us because he knew that that was the only way to save us. May his favour be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. I wonder whether my reaction the first time I heard that song was in any way similar to the reaction of the people of God when they heard Ezra speak. One of wonder that God loves us all individually, knows us inside and out and wants the best for us. That his word is written for every human, past, present and future. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is for you. He is for you. God's word is there for us. All we need to do is to read it, open our hearts, let God speak through it to us and rejoice and worship. Now, when I first heard that song, as I say, I thought it had been around for ages. And then I discovered that actually it had only been written a few days before the performance that we saw on the screen. The two of them got together with their minister and they they felt that they needed to write a song from scripture. And I think it was literally four days from when when they wrote that song to the performance that we saw. Now, I remember on the way home last week, I said, uh, or Catherine said to me, I think I prefer the UK blessing version of that because the version that you saw last week was before there was any lockdown. So it was a normal, for them, a normal church service. It was a, a bit like a performance. But the one that the UK blessing was a bit more like now that we might have. So I did a little bit of research and I found that not only the UK blessing is there, you can find it on YouTube, but the Australian version and the Canadian version and the South African version and the Indian version and the Japanese version. There's so many versions. There's rock versions. There's an amazing, if you, if you, if you like um, sort of classical music, there's an amazing orchestral version on YouTube as well. There's a gospel choir version from the Kingdom Choir in London. There's children's versions. There's a, there's a lovely one with just kids. And versions, as I say, in lots of different languages. But the key thing is that they are all the word of God being sung around the world by the people of God. People that are confused and scared at the moment, that they don't know what is going on. And I think that God has used that song to remind us that our reality isn't as secure as we thought it was. But that he is the same yesterday and today and forever. Now, as well as all those different versions from around the world, I found two months after the original um, performance of that song, uh, Elevation Church in, um, I think it's Ballantyne in North Carolina, they did another version. The church by that point was locked down. It's the same stage. It's the same video screens. But it's totally different. And I'm going to finish today by playing you that version. It's from May 2020. And I think, if anything, it made it even more poignant to me. Now, just like the original song, it is quite long, but I think it's it's worth spending a bit of time on. So this is that new version from May 2020. And one of the interesting things about that act of worship, and and as, yeah, they were outside 
They had only rebuilt the temple a few years beforehand. But in their years of exile in Babylon, they hadn't had the temple, and they had learnt to worship in a new way. They get back to Jerusalem, and they rebuild the temple. But this amazing act of worship, I don't know, you know how, they used the, how they used the temple in those years, but this amazing act of worship did not take place in the temple. God was doing a new thing. And I don't know what that means for us now. But what I do know is that openness to be able to do things in a new way. We're going into a new land. It was a return for them. It was a return. Although remember, not everybody left Jerusalem at the beginning of the exile and not everybody came back. But for those that did, it was a return, but it wasn't a return to as they knew it. Yeah, we will get you all back in the corner and Jonathan and everybody, and it, but it will, we will be in a different place and we will be in it together and we will be in it as part of something bigger. The other thing that struck me from what Nick was saying, and I will shut up in a minute, was that sense of needing some discipline and a reminder that it's harder for us to meet and as we meet together like this, it's not the same. And that part of the new thing is actually do we need to rediscover and reclaim a sense of our own personal discipline. I'm being very much challenged to do so. I'm going to be starting um, the... uh, Uh, Ignatian uh, retreat um, which will take a number of weeks or months Um, and that's going to I'm I'm a bit scared because it really means taking on a a new level of discipline in prayer Nick was talking about needing to read the Bible do we need to be looking at our own as we move into this new land we're not going to get we don't get fed quite the same way when we come together it's all harder Do we need to reclaim that sense of discipline as we go into our new land? That was just something that struck me from what Nick was saying, and I know is something that's going on in my life, and perhaps something we need to be aware of. That God, we're all in it together, but God wants us, wants to be working in our lives. And our response to what we have heard, in a way sort of echoes the response of the people who heard Ezra. And we, I think we can stand up, can't we? We're allowed to stand up. Please stand up. (laughs) We're going to say what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and was on the side. He was suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. He has spoken through the prophets. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins.
And now, please be seated as Barbara comes to lead us in our prayers. As we continue with these prayers, let's remember that blessing that has been poured out on, every, on all people, everywhere. People are frightened, confused, and depressed by our current circumstances. So, Lord, we pray that increasingly, like those Israelites before Ezra, they might turn to you and know your love and everlasting faithfulness in all circumstances. We pray for our government and those of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. May they know what decisions are right and may they have the courage to implement them. May they know how to keep people safe. Looking further afield than just our own nation, we pray that Parliament might stand firm for what is in the best interest of the nation as negotiations with the EU draw to a close. May it be a right decision for all parties. And we pray for our media. May they report fairly and without bias. We pray, Father, that their reporting might encourage as well as inform the nation. And Father, we pray for the nations and, the pe and people who have so much more to deal with than just the pandemic. We pray for mutual understanding and respect rather than war. We pray for the means to support people through monsoon floods, wildfires, and all the other natural or man-made disasters that so many are suffering. And just, we pray a little bit more, especially for Alex and Marguerite and their family. In Cambodia at the moment, they're suffering severe flooding because of extra monsoon rains. And we pray that that country might find relief and help and that Alex and Marguerite and the others out there with them might know from you how they can be a help to the nation in which they serve. And lastly, we pray for Pauline, Andrew and their families, giving thanks for their service to us. We pray that us as a congregation help might help and encourage each other and exhibit the Lord's love to all people. These and all our prayers we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Barbara. Would you like to stand? again. This day is holy to our God. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. And Christ comes to bring us the peace we long for. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So, peace be with you. <laughs> Please be seated.
the Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. To you be glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly King, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in heaven and earth, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, saying, Faith and trust, we pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Amen. lockdown period I've become a bit of a fan of Brother Isaiah um, some amazing songs they've become a bit um, of an earworm really <laughs> but incredibly deep deep words um, we've been fed together by God's word and by the bread and the wine and we give thanks. Holy and blessed God, you have fed us with the body and blood of your Son and filled us with your Holy Spirit. May we honour you not only with our lips but in lives dedicated to the service of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God who gives patience and encouragement, give you a spirit of unity to live in harmony as you follow Jesus Christ, so that with one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. Just to say, there is um, a, a breathing space this evening. Um, it's in your notice sheet and the link to it. And actually, I know it sounds a bit weird... But sitting in silence on Zoom is really, really special and powerful. It's been really good, hasn't it? I've only made for one, and I will try and remember tonight. Um, it's a really special time of quiet prayer, which was always wonderful in the, um, in, in the sanctuary. But actually, it's just as wonderful when we join together via Zoom. So I do encourage you to um, click on the link this evening. Um, at the due time and, and join. <laughs>